Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you had a really great weekend. So today I'm going to go over Friday's price action and then before we get into the second half of the video, I'm going to go over a few questions and comments that I had last week. It's sometimes easier for me to respond and be able to show what I'm talking about. That is something new that I may be doing and I may be adding to the channel. So starting in SPY on Friday, we did open with a gap up and we gapped up all the way to the 50 day moving average and the one hour 200 moving average. And you could see the wicks that got a little bit above those two levels. We did see some selling there and got pushed back down. We did fill that gap that we opened on Monday of last week. And then just underneath that gap, we did see a little bit of buying and we got pulled back up to right underneath the 50 day moving average. And we closed just underneath that and also just above the one hour 200 moving average. So a really big move on Friday. We did take it all the way to the top of the trading range and SPY did close up 1.24%. VIX got crushed on Friday down 8.11% and we closed just outside of the trading range so we did not close within the implied move. And the key takeaway is that we closed just underneath that 50 day moving average. And switching over to QQQ, we also opened with a gap up here and again the 50 day moving average is right here and you could see that wick we did see selling at the 50 day moving average we got pushed down to the one hour 200 moving average and then we traded sideways right here between the 50 day moving average and the one hour 200 moving average i want to show this on the five minute time frame this is the same in all three we did see that gap up and then that 35 ema we consolidated to it and then it stayed as our support into close and that is qqq spy and spx followed the same pattern i'm not going to show it in all three but just a reminder to use that 35 ema intraday while you're trading so going back to the 30 minute time frame so qqq did close up 2.01 percent big day vxn closed down 7.10 percent and here we did not stay within the implied move we closed completely outside of the trading range but we did close underneath the 50 day moving average that's the big thing to remember and spx almost exactly the same as spy you could see a little bit more of the body getting above the 50 day moving average in spx but we did come back down we closed out the gap from monday just underneath that gap we did see some buying which brought us back up to close just underneath the 50 day moving average and I'm even going to go into futures today. ES on the daily time frame. I'm just going to show that 50 day moving average right here. As of right now, we are just underneath that 50 day moving average. So if you're up and tracking ES, that is a big level to watch. So far, you can see we're getting a little bit stuck in futures at that level. All right. And SPX did close up 1.26%. And let me get back to my other chart setup. So over the weekend, I did get a few questions and comments. And the first one is from YouTube on Thursday night's video. It says, looking forward to your upload tonight, holding puts at 511 for May 17th, getting nervous. Thank you. And my response is, are you hedged? And let's go into options for a second and look at may 17th so that is a 511 put that is at 395 and i'm not sure what you paid for that option but just pretend that you got that right at close right before the market closed on friday so you paid right around 395 for that 511 put and what you want to do at the same time as buying this option is to sell a shorter dated option which would be on the may 6th contract and you want to sell something that you don't think is going to hit so i usually look for the option that is priced at 
around 50 around 50 dollars and get the one just underneath it so i would sell the 509 put uh, for tomorrow's contract may 6th and that is your hedge for over the weekend so if we open monday and we trade flat or if we trade up you're at least collecting a little bit to offset the price of your further dated option and it gives you a little bit more room to be right and then so say we close at 509 and 15 cents so you keep the entire hedge then the next day since you still have how many days you have 12 days on that then you go to the next day's contract and you again you sell the one underneath the $50 one and you collect 40 40 bucks and you just stay hedged until you get that move to whatever option you sold so i hope that helps i always stay hedged no matter what i never trade naked options so that is that and then this one is from stock twits this one says can you post a youtube video explaining how to debit spread and straddle options how to set up and exit the trade okay so i want to start off by saying i do not trade debit spreads and I very rarely straddle anything. Straddles are good for when you're expecting really big volatility, like, like earnings, when you see like a 15% move, then maybe a straddle is something to use. I've probably used a straddle twice in my entire life. It's not my favorite uh, way to trade, but I will show you my credit spread strategy. And uh, so let's use uh, SPX because that's what we have here. This is what I trade most of the time and I trade credit spreads. So I usually will take the top strike, uh, the top of the 30 day average. And if we get a move up here, which we did on Friday, we got to move all the way up to the top of the trading range. So I did, I sold the 51.25 strike and then I bought $10 higher at 51.35 and the way that works is that now you want to have a close underneath the midpoint which is 51.30 so you so you want to see a close under 51.30 and you could see we did close under 51.30 we closed at 51.27 and that particular spread closed up 38 percent for me so it was a pretty good win now if we closed underneath 5125 then that would have been a 100 percent win on that option i don't do debit spreads i feel that credit spreads are much more effective if we had dropped on friday then i would have looked to the 5000 strike i would have sold that i would have bought 49.90 and I usually only buy them once we make that full move. So if we stayed flat, I would not be selling these over here. So the risk reward is terrible if you sell here, but if you sell at the outer edges, it's more balanced. It's about 50-50. So usually I'll open the spreads on either side at around $4.50, and then I'll average in at $5.00 and then $5.50, and that, that's always exactly my trade every day. That doesn't really change. So hopefully that helps a little bit. In SPY, it is um, it would be about the same. So I would have, if I was trading SPY in the same strategy, I would have sold the 511 strike, I would have bought the 512 strike, and then you wanna see a close underneath 511.50, and you could see that 511.29 was our close which means we saw a that would have been at expiration a green and probably around 34 to 38 percent as well and again i never sell these options from down here if price is down here but if we make that full move that's usually about 45 cents for that spread and then i average in at 50 cents and 55 cents so hopefully that makes sense if it doesn't just keep asking questions and I'll try and go over that. Um, so yeah, I don't do debit spreads and I don't straddle. But um, there you have it, guys. Okay, so that is last Friday's price action and the questions. And we do have a ton of earnings again this week. I will get a list of what earnings we have. I'll get that in the comments below. So check that out. All right, let's go check out tomorrow's trading ranges.
right guys so before we head into tomorrow's trading ranges if you find these videos useful and you love that i break it down every night then please give this video a like and if you have any questions leave me a comment or if you just want to say hi leave me a comment and make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out when i do post new videos all right starting in spy tomorrow's implied move is between 507 and 515 that is from options and the 30-day average volatility is two dollars wider in each direction 505 to 517 and to the upside we have the 50-day moving average is right above us and if we can get above that level that is a really big level um, if we get above that level, then we're probably looking at this bear flag right here as maybe not happening. And there's maybe just a little bit more room. Let's actually do this really quickly right here. Okay, so like that. There you go. So we do have a little bit of room above the 50 day moving average to still keep this bear flag formation. But if we come down, if we start to see this as support, and then if we break above that, then 515 is the top of the implied move. And then we have at the very top of the trading range, we have this down gap right here. Now this was the week where we saw that Middle East tension right here, and we saw that pretty decent drop. Uh, that was also right after hot CPI data came out. So we saw the hot CPI down gap. Then we came up after filling this gap. We came back up and the very top of that hot CPI gap plus the 30 minute 200 moving average right there. That was our resistance and we gapped back down and then drop down to the four hour 200 moving average. So this gap right here is at the top of the trading range tomorrow, and the top of that gap is at 518. I would look to that for possible resistance. We did see that previous gap, the top of that gap as resistance here. So right here at 518. So that is the upside of the trading range. The downside, we have the one hour 200 moving average. And on Friday, we actually closed right between those two levels. And then if we break the one hour 200 moving average, we have Friday's up gap. And the bottom of the implied move at 507 is right in the middle of that gap. And then right at the bottom of the trading range, we have the 30 minute 200 moving average. Always know where the 35 EMA is. Right now it is underneath us and remember, that level does act like a magnet. We tend to go around it, or like right here, we drop underneath and then come back to it, drop, come back to it. So 35 EMA is underneath us tomorrow. And if we do break that 30 minute 200 moving average, support is right here. This goes back to FOMC of last week. So where we did see we traded down and flat, then we saw that pop up and that drop into close. So that's around 500 and that 400, 200 moving average. Sorry, that four hour 200 moving average is underneath all of it. So that is SPY. Definitely a lot going on in tomorrow's trading range. QQQ is 431 and 439. That is the implied move and that is from options. The 30-day average volatility is quite a bit wider, 428 to 442. And to the upside, the 50-day moving average, that is a really big level. And in NQ futures, I showed ES in the first part of the video, but NQ is also um, right here just underneath the 50-day moving average. That is a very, very important level right here. Pretty sure that all eyes are on the 50-day moving average, both in NQ and QQQ. 
and um, okay so getting back to the trading range that 50-day moving average is directly above us if we get above that the top of the implied move is at 439 and at the very top of the trading range we have the same down gap that we saw in SPY and that is right after we saw the hot CPI data in April and I'd say without a doubt the most important level in tomorrow's trading range is that 50-day moving average then if we get rejected at the 50-day moving average if we come down we do have the one hour 200 moving average and this gap right here this was last Monday I thought we closed that out completely but we didn't when I went back to fix up the levels we actually saw that as a support so we did not close it all the way that is at just a little bit above 432 could definitely be a support level and underneath that we do have the up gap from last friday it was a pretty big one it was a one and a quarter percent up gap and pay attention to where the 35 ema is it is underneath the implied move which could signal a flat or down day tomorrow as this level catches up and um, bottom of the implied move 431 30 minute 200 moving average at the very outskirts of tomorrow's trading range actually tomorrow's trading range is at bottom at 428 uh, so the 30 minute is quite outside of tomorrow's trading range and then we have the four hour 200 moving average the four hour 200 moving average could act as a support for the 30 minute 200 moving average if that is a new concept for you then don't worry I will teach it to you down the road <laughs> um, but it is outside of tomorrow's trading range so pretty far out um, all right so that is QQQ and SPX we have the implied move over here between 5100 and 5155 that is from options now SPX options uh, do the theta does burn over the weekend and so that is why this is, looks so much smaller than um, SPY and we did have that big drop in VIX and then you could see a little bit of that burn with um, how small the range got so um, 5100 to 5155 that is from options 30-day average quite a bit wider 5065 to 5190 to the upside we have the 50-day moving average uh, just right above where we closed and then if we get above that 5155 is the top of the implied move and then at the very top of the trading range tomorrow we have that down gap from right after hot CPI in April and then that drop that we saw after that so that is at the top of the trading range the top of that gap is just under 5200 and then to the downside we have the one hour 200 moving average and then the bottom of the implied move is at 5100 35 EMA is underneath the implied move I would think that that would signal a flat or down day as we either drop to meet the 35 EMA or stay flat to wait for it to come up. Underneath the implied move, we have the up gap from Thursday going into Friday. And then the bottom of the trading range, we have that 30 minute 200 moving average. So really wild trading range. Mondays, I usually wait on taking a trade until the market decides on direction. You don't have to rush into a trade. You can wait for the trade to come to you, especially on a Monday. So there you have it, guys. All three trading ranges. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys are holding. And most importantly, have fun. Trade safe. Make sure you take profits when you're out. See you guys tomorrow.